Mm, guys, this, this is good. What's that? What y'all call this? Is is this is delicious? It's like it tastes like pickles. Mmm, so good. I'm just hanging out with my little homies now. Got myself a little crew. Hey, where you going? Mm. That snowflake again. Dang that rooster. Hope y'all like that. You come back and get more whenever you want now. <laughs> yep. That's why they call me Snowflake. I'm gonna give me some of this more of these scrumptious pickles. Mm. Hey, you guys seen Snowflake? Have you guys seen nobody? Nobody. Nobody knows where Snowflake's at. Nobody. Oh, hey, Wh Waylon. Have you seen Snowflake? Girl. Oh, is that how your crew works? They, they just don't talk to me, huh? They won't talk to me. They won't talk to me. Y'all. Y'all are protecting them. You know, I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna find them. We're gonna find Snowflake. I'm done with it. You guys, you guys seen Snowflake? I hear a rooster. Where is he at? Where are you at, Snowflake? Where are you at? Oh no, guys, it's gonna kick me out the coop again. I just know it. Guess what? You know what? I gotta figure something real quick. Oh, guess what? Snowflake got an idea. Okay, let's do this. That's Waylon, but who are you? I haven't seen you around here before. My friends call me El Chapo. I'm also known by Copo de Nieve. Hmm. El Chapo? Either way. I'm looking for this rooster named Snowflakes, causing all kinds of problems with my hands. You seen him? He's about yay tall. He's 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 a bit of a forceful uh forceful rooster, rooster if you know what I mean you know I do not know the snowflake you are looking for senor hey if you see the snowflake you let me know would you you'll be the first one to contact senor all right man hate to bother you I'll let you be on your way I'm gonna go find this rooster <laughs> <laughs> yeah he fell for it suckers call me snowflake for nothing what is this Oh, heck no. Wait, first of all, where did he get the disguise? Yeah, next time, buddy. Next time. God, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. I can't do it. Can't do it. Hey guys, I'm back. Hope you stay missing pickles. I love me some pickles. They're delicious. Hey, what's going on underneath this bush? Hey, it's you. Hey, man. What's, hey, what's up? Hey, guys, can I get some prophecy? It's snowflake time. Having little girls on the homestead? Any of you? <laughs> Everyone liked that intro? I thought it was pretty good. Hey, today we're gonna try to finish up this chickshaw, get it painted up, get the hardware cloth on it, try to get the roof on and get it out of the garage. The chicks, or chickens, should I say now, they are out of my barn. I moved them. I moved them a few days ago. They were just getting too big. Life was getting too busy for me. And I just didn't see them being in this, uh, this little small coop area for very much longer. It wasn't fair to them. So I put them with the meat birds. You got this creepy guy right here sneaking up behind me. So let's go take a look at this chick shot and see how far we're at. Man, this thing is almost done. So all we gotta do now is we're gonna, we're gonna paint all this white I gotta put some hardware cloth on the bottom of the box, put the sides on, put the roof panelings on, and we should be good to go. Even though we gotta get that done, I'm gonna try to get it done. I wanna tell you about my first six months on YouTube.
look at this. These girls, if there is a reason to get free range backyard chickens, is this right here. They really put a working on all the bugs around the house. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about my first six months on YouTube. What I'd like to say first of all is it holds true what everybody says that it is a marathon and not a race. People get discouraged. You see other channels get doing well. You wonder why am I not there? What am I doing wrong? So and so forth. Myself, I've gone through these. Beat myself over up over things. Watch my subscriber count go up, go down over one video. I seem like at a point there, every time I posted a video, I would lose subscribers. And you know what? That's okay. Don't get mad at that. I found to stop getting upset at those things because there's nothing you can do to control that. Because if you're being you and you're doing the things that you wanna do, then people are gonna come and go and let them go. Don't try to change what you're doing unless it's something that you think that you're doing wrong. Myself, if you watch my first video, I was a totally different person and I slowly progressed. And now I've really started having fun with YouTube in the last couple months. Uh, it has been frustrating at times for me because I've seen my subscriber count go up and go down. And you know, I've learned to not chicken hawk and watch that number because even though it does mean something because it gives me some goals that I want to do and there's some options that YouTube gives you once you hit certain subscriber counts, but at the end, it really doesn't really matter. It's all about taking care of the people who do enjoy your channel, making sure that they're happy, enjoy what you're doing first of all, and then the rest comes later. Getting frustrated is gonna happen, guys. Like, you're not gonna believe this, but I probably just shot five minutes of video of me talking to you, and I go and I look, and the camera's not even rolling, guys. The camera wasn't even rolling. If there's anything that makes you want to take your equipment and just throw it in the woods and be like, I'm done with it for the day, it's stuff like that happens. Uh, crappy equipment, bad mics, stuff like that. There's no way around it. You can't get frustrated with this stuff. You just have to roll with it. And there's been times where I've just set stuff down and walked away from it because today was not the day that a video was gonna get made. And there's sometimes you guys have to do that. If you're finding yourself being frustrated because of something, just walk away from it, step away from it. Uh, I've gone a few days without even looking at YouTube um, as not, I reply to comments, but, but just not watching videos because I just, I had to get a break from it. But there's gonna be things that you're gonna do and you're gonna change, you're gonna change as your channel changes. So the biggest thing is don't be fake. Don't be something you're not. They call it YouTube for a reason. If you're trying to appease the niche that you're in and you're trying to change who you are to fit into a certain niche, you're not gonna be happy. Um, you need to be who you are because if you do that, your whole channel is gonna be based on a lie and it's gonna be really hard to make videos if the whole time you weren't being you. So make sure that you're being you. Uh, I found this out. <laughs> I did. I stopped. I wasn't being myself. I wasn't being true to myself. Um, and you can see that as I made videos that I wasn't really being myself. Not like I am now. I found it hard to talk to the camera. I avoided saying certain things so I wouldn't lose subscribers and or upset people because I didn't feel like fighting in the comment section because uh, I'm very opinionated. I'm um, very stubborn and I'm and I'm firm to what I believe in um, but I found myself not being me and then in the last couple months I've really opened myself up to being who I am and not worrying about staying in the guidelines of what other people or what I thought other people would want of me don't compare yourself to those big channels and wonder why your channel is not doing great or growing as fast or that last video I made Man, that thing, I really knocked it out of the park with that video. Why did it only get 100 views? Why did it only get 50 views? You know, if you watch those things and you don't learn from them, 
and you watch those things and pay attention to them for the wrong reasons, you'll burn yourself out. You, I was going down that path and this is how I know. So what I started doing, I started watching other channels and I wasn't watching them for their great content, even though that was a side piece of why I was watching them and what I got from them is watching awesome videos from the people, I, channels I love watching. But I started paying attention to things they were doing. For one, I started paying attention to how they made their films. I started paying attention to how they talked, how they held the camera, what angles they were holding the camera, how long they stayed on a certain shot and then moved on to another one. How did they transition to different subjects? I started paying attention to things like that. Once you start paying attention to things like that, then you're on the right track. Then you need, you can model yourself after that, that channel that has 100,000 subscribers. Because like I said, they all started at zero. You go back to the video that they first made, and I've done this. I've gone to, I've gone to Dutch's channel. I looked at his first videos, and I started, I started trending his, when he started picking up and, I, and seeing how he grew and learning what he started doing different and you know watching his videos talk about how he went through name changes and things weren't working for him this direction and he got out of this group and he started getting in this and that and you know one thing I noticed about Dutch is how he got his name well his YouTube name well the fact that he started off with cooking and numerous other things homestead and stuff like that but then he got out of the homestead and he started being himself. He started, he started doing the things that he loved making content about and everything just fell into place. And that's what I'm starting to do. I stopped trying to concentrate on like, and today, this is how you feed chickens. I didn't wanna be boring. I didn't wanna be another boring YouTube channel. And you know, I lost subscribers along the way, but that's fine, I'm okay with that. It happens. My first six months in YouTube was an up and down roller coaster and it nearly drove me nuts. If it wasn't for like Dutch and Jason Coghill that were out there and they helped me and they talked to me, they didn't treat me just like a fan. They didn't they didn't treat me like I was there to be like, oh my God, oh my God, you're talking to me. This is so cool, whatever. No, I asked questions and they answered them honestly. They answered them honestly, and I respected that. And I had one of the creators ask me, well, can I ask you, what do you expect to get out of YouTube? And I sat there and I read that, and I was like, man, you know what? I don't know what I expect to get out of YouTube. And the, how I answered that question was, I wanted information, I wanted to share information, I wanted information to be shared to me. So that was a very true statement, or true answer, how I felt right then and there. Um, about what I wanted to get out of YouTube is I wanted information. I wanted to learn how I wanted to learn how to raise chickens a little bit better. I wanted people's opinions. I wanted to show people what I learned and the mistakes I made. But now I'm still for that. I still want that. Um, I wasn't getting the results that I wanted from that though. People weren't interacting with me. So I had to change things up. So I started being me. I'm still trying to find out who I am and what kind of channel I want. I love raising animals. I can't wait to grow into a uh, bigger homestead. Looking forward to building goat enclosures, looking to get other animals besides chickens, but they are what I enjoy right now. Hopefully I will have this great, great channel with a huge community and following. But if I don't get there, if it doesn't happen, is that gonna change who I am? No, it won't. Because what I'm doing now is what makes me happy. And it's what I'm doing right now that makes other people happy. I've had so many great comments of people saying, thank you so much for that laugh. Um, it really made my day, so on and so forth. It changed their day, and that made me feel like it's worthwhile. Like going out there and being a goofball, coming up with these ideas, taking hours out of the day to video and edit, 
and come up with these ideas really made it worthwhile. And I'll continue doing it as long as I continue getting responses like that. Uh, I can honestly say I didn't expect to grow as fast as I did, but I would say that a lot of it has to do with the help from Dutch and Hidden Heights Farm and uh, Jason Coghill and um, Daniel from Arms Family Homestead. You know, so these people answered my questions. They treated me like a man. They, uh, they, didn't, they didn't blow me off. They took the time to answer my questions. And I really appreciate that, guys. I couldn't, I wouldn't be where I'm at yet if it wasn't for you guys. I had a little bit to do with it, but at least I will always be humble. Look at this. I got a comb for daddy's beard, just in case. <laughs> there you go. But that's just how impressed oh, and happy nice. I am on the way things are going. And the people that I have on my channel, nice. the people I have on my channel are some great subscribers, great fans. I enjoy every one of these comments, everybody's comments. I enjoy them a lot. And okay. I'm going to cut my beard off. No, you're not. You, you do. You're going to be sorry. Oh, yeah? Why? I got to come for his beard. Because your beard is mine. <laughs> I have a little pocket and I fill stuff with it. Like makeup. And I got a comb for that. So this makeup, not real makeup, of course. It's fake, see? Oh, yeah. I just put on this for <laughs> Alright, okay. guys. Because this is foundation. <laughs> Alright, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Sunny Slope Homestead. Bye!